And hey, welcome, welcome, world changers. This is going to be Hello. fun today. Um, Juan is on different meetings and busy. So Kylie and I are going to talk a little bit just about our story and the process that we, we've gone through, right? And, and not that we've done anything special, but we've learned from so many amazing people yeah. and, and just really been, well, we started from nothing. So we had to be coachable, right? And so we're just going to go through our process, kind of tell a little bit of our story and uh, go through how we went from me not even having a Facebook page, any social media, zero. I, was, I, I, had, I had no, no fingerprint no footprint, nothing in the social media world to what we're doing now. Yes. So a lot of people are surprised to know that Ryan and I have only been in this industry just shy of six years. It'll be six years in July that we joined um, our very first company. Um, a lot of people like Ryan said, well, are shocked that he doesn't even have a Facebook account. And I think like talking know, to people, y'all. You know, there's a lot of people that are like, you guys have never done this before. Like, this is so crazy. Even whenever we joined our first company and we were doing things, um, we were hitting ranks pretty quickly. People were like, you guys have never done this before. And that was like the story that everybody was telling. And we're like, all it was is we just wanted something more for our family. Ryan was a boys basketball coach and a teacher. I was just a stay at home mom and a gymnastics coach. And like, we just were living paycheck to paycheck and we were tired of living paycheck to paycheck and having to tell our kids no. And that's how it all started, right? A well, simple. Yeah, we were telling them, we were having to tell them no for things they needed. Yeah, yes. And that's where we had a little really girl that home. needed braces. She had severe jaw pain and we, we couldn't, we couldn't do that. Yep. And, you know, new shoes, stuff like that. I mean, like all the things that we had to say no to even putting things back at the grocery store. Right. Like that was not only humiliating, but it was heartbreaking. And so um, when we first started, I just wanted to make grocery money. That was right. it. $500 at the time. Now our kids are 14, 12, and, and seven. But at the time they were, I can't even count right now, eight, six, and two. And oh, well, Rain's almost yeah. eight. Okay, yeah. so he's almost eight. Um, but five hundred dollars would be a game changer for us to not have to put things back at the grocery store or get our our card declined. And and so that's all that that's how it started. We started with we want to stop telling our kids no, and we want to have enough money for groceries and a little tiny bit yeah. left over and it evolved so so I, I i understand that sounds kind of selfish but i don't believe it is we were <laughs> in need right and that has evolved now to where once we were able to help ourselves we're like we want to help others do this yeah we want to help others out can you hand me your notes because i i can't remember everything that we talked about <laughs> um the this back pain um so that's where we were at. And, and that was kind of a point where whenever we, we got going, um, we did have some great mentors and we just said, Hey, how do Jesus. you do this? Yeah. Right. And they were said, well, first thing that, that we were told, or the first thing I was told was find your why. Yeah. Why do you do what you do? Yeah. And, um, and Juan has talked about this before and we've talked about it. They made very sure that it was not a monetary thing. Don't be something that you can fix with numbers, right? And so um, we had to find our why and, and, and what it was. And, and one was to give our family better and to bring our family out of the hole that we were in. Yeah. And then it evolved, right? It has evolved into other people on it has evolved into more than that. Like my why is helping people. My why is is letting people experience a better yeah. life, Some right? Freedom in areas that they've been bound to. Right. So that, that was, that was the big thing. Um, sorry, we got some of the people hopping on. Um, so that was, that was number one, right? Yeah. We had to find our why and it had to be something special. And then the other thing that, that I remember Natalie saying, um, you better be coachable. And I was like, okay, well, I get that. We need to follow your lead. She's like, no, you, you've got to be coachable. Like what are the best players on your team? Uh, I said, well, the studs, those are my favorites. And she's like, have you ever had a stud um, that you couldn't get them to do anything different and you saw so much in them and you could help them and things could get better? Yeah. And um, you could, 
I said, okay, so my favorite players are, are very gifted athletes that are also coachable. And she's like, that's it. You've got to be coachable. Yeah. You've got to be yeah. willing to do it because you've never done this before. And even those that have, I've found I'm still learning. I've watched so many of you post things and do things. I'm like, oh, that's well, so just, the, just the boards that's thing, so because I'm so, I struggle with technology. Just, just the idea of this boards thing, how, how much it helps me be efficient. So like being coachable, is huge. Oh, absolutely. Like watching people who have been successful, that's what you do. Do the things that work and that work for you. Right. right. And we don't know it all. I mean, like Ryan said, we still don't know it all. I still listen to podcasts all the time of, of rock stars in this industry. Right. And so, yes. And, and one of the, the things that our mentors would always say was, can I coach you? Absolutely. Because I, I am walking into this, not knowing anything. I want to do the things that are going to not only change my life, but change the lives of others. Right. And that was huge. <laughs> them asking. And that's something that I didn't get at the start, but I've learned as we become leaders, you can't lead someone without them being willing to be led. To be led. Yeah. You can't coach someone without them willing to be coached. Yeah. And um, so when you ask that, when they ask that and we give them permission, that not only gave them permission and, and me set the standard, like, hey, they're going to give me guidance, they're gonna do, but it also set the standard that when I am doing something that's taking our business the wrong way or it's not very efficient, they can call me out on that. Yeah. They can go, hey, because I gave them permission to coach me. Yeah. They're not they're not criticizing me. They're not tearing me down. No, they're, they're trying to make me a better version of me yeah. and a better business builder. Right. Well, and it's, it's sometimes it's as simple as you remember why you're doing this, right? Like you, you're, you told me this, but you're doing, you're going this way. Let's get back. So it, it allows us to hold each other accountable too. Right. Like, I, you remember what you said, you said, I could coach you. I see the path that you're taking let's kind of redirect. And, um, and that's been a big, right. A big game changer. Right. And then here's another thing that they said, you got to be consistent. Yes. You have to show up every single day. Yes. Like if, if you know what you want and you have your why and you set your goals, you have to show up every single day. And I was like, okay, I get that. That's something we talk about our players. Yeah. But if you want to show up every single day, you got to get your mindset right. Yeah. And so we had a lot of JM3, um, jo Joseph McClendon, the third, um, where we did some trainings with him. Tony Robbins. Uh, to yeah. And then um, Mel Robbins. We've been we've blessed been with blessed. some of the most amazing training. Right. And then it all revolved around getting your mindset right. Because if you have your right mindset and you make a commitment and it's not just a commitment based on your emotions, but once all the emotions and all the fun run out. Yeah. Can you still stick to that commitment when it's, when it's tough? Yeah. Can you still stick to the commitment when you've been told nine, 10, 12, 50 times, right? So it, it was a mindset shift. And so that personal growth. And so that's why Juan and I and Kylie and, and James and just everyone have been so focused on, I really want you to become a leader. We really, that mindset, that personal development is a necessity. Yeah. Okay. So I am begging you to commit to some type of personal development on a regular basis. And I get it. Sometimes we wake up in the morning and we're like, I just don't feel I don't it today. I can't come up with something to post. I really don't want to talk to people. Like it's just one of those days, right? And so when you can go back and you can look at a, a commitment that you wrote down and go back and read it and go, okay, I committed to this. And this is why I committed to it. Okay, I'm going to suck it up and I'm going to do this. I might not be very good at it today, but I'm going to consistently show up, not just for my team, but I'm going to consistently show up for me, myself and my family. Yeah. And so those were some of the big things that, well, Natalie, I just love her. She really set on, right? She set on these and made us commit to them before we ever, like we were still building, right? We were still doing the things to build our business, but that was the focus. Yeah, yeah. Your why has to be worth all of it. Right. Is your is your why worth the no's and the struggles? And and we talk a lot, even in our own home, feelings lie. Yeah, right? all the time. Feelings lie, do the work consistently because, and it may just be baby steps if you're either, you know, every day. If it's a baby step, at least you're taking the step that, you know, gets you closer, one day closer to your goal. Right. And I'm, can I, I'm just going to be real honest with you guys. 
there were times in the personal development side and the leadership side and yeah. the mindset side that I'm like, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> can, can we just do something that's going to make me some money? Can we just do this? Like I was that guy that's going, come on, can we move? For, I want to, we want to make, Teach but how to do the business. Right. Yeah. But in the long run, how much it's helped us has been so big. And we have a quote at home. All right. And this is something I tell my kids. And, and I really talk about athletics in this side. Unordinary goals require unordinary actions. Yeah. Okay. So unordinary goals require unordinary actions. So when I look at my goals and what we want to do, I have to go back and go, mm -hmm. okay, do my actions match my goals yeah. and my goals are not normal we have found that out so much in our families like when we yeah. do things and we're a part of this and we're doing this and they're like this is silly you need to have a job you need to do the normal stuff hey go to get your nine to five do this yeah. and, and when yeah. I told them I was walking away from teaching my parents my grandparents about lost their minds they they, they, they I just don't understand. they didn't understand so we could have quit because of all of the negativity but we knew right we knew what we were doing and we had our why right and even before I quit my job like we would go on business trips like we'd go on these trainings we'd go on these things and people are like I just don't understand why you do that my goals are not your goals yeah my goals are different than your goals. And so what I want, I have to make sure I'm doing the things that's going to lead me to that. So um, if there's a quote that you can remember, this is one that's always stuck with this, is that unordinary goals require unordinary actions, yeah. right? And so that's- or extraordinary goals. Yeah, extraordinary goals require- Require extraordinary action. And you, however you want to do it, however yeah. your brain works. So extraordinary requires extraordinary. Right. Right. Okay. So that was the start. That, that was the start of it. And that was the, the basic, if you can get your mindset right and all that there, but there's still got to be action steps, right? Yeah. There's still got to be things that we do on a daily basis that we do on a weekly basis that we do on a monthly basis that lead to business, right? Kylie already said she had her own, well, as a joint Facebook account, right? <laughs> so we, she, but she yeah. was the one posting on it. I had nothing. I didn't want to post on it. I didn't want to be a part of it, right? You'd see an occasional picture of my fat butt walking around, but that'd be about it, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. So, and, and a lot of ours was just our kids, which you're still seeing our kids all the time on my Facebook. Um, but yeah, it was just a very generic. I was sharing posts. I was sharing quotes. I was sharing different things. Nothing was personal on there. Nothing was really transparent on there. Nothing was inside look at our life on there it was just our cute kids which is great right but it wasn't <clears throat> for me what attracts me is somebody that um is transparent that does share that that I get value from and so that was that was the shift is how do I make my page something that brings value to others lives right and that was when everything changed for us yeah, well, it really changed for you on yours. Yeah. Because I watched, believe me, I still sat and watched for a little bit. Um, but uh, Michael reached out to me and said, hey, dude, you only have a Facebook page. And I'm like, do I need one? He was like, well, yeah, I think so. I really think it would help. Yeah. He's like, you're, you're, you don't have a pond efficient. You don't have, um, and I say pond efficient because that's my term, but you didn't have a, a place to bring people in. And he, I said, so, so what do I do? He's like, go create one. So I created one and I had zero friends and I had zero posts. And no matter what, then Callie is my friend, right? Of course she, <laughs> she, she accepts my friend request. Um, but I just, I don't know what to do. And yeah. so I sat down, um, I can't remember who was, they kind of walked me through the basic steps, but these were the basic steps that I followed. So if you're, if you're brand new to this and maybe you have Facebook, but like you've never done this, this was my DMOs, my daily method of operation. Every morning I would get up and because I didn't have any friends, I went and I tried to friend request 10 to 20 people every day. And some days were more, right? I was trying to build my friends. Now, Here's when I go back and look at it, what I would do different. I was just friend requesting anyone I saw, just anyone. 
if I could go back and do it again, I would look at those people's accounts and be a little bit more strategic in my friend request, right? We were in um, a weight loss supplement is what we were doing. And so I went after every bodybuilder and health coach I could. Biggest mistake. Throw that out the window. Throw Ooh, it out the window. Over the fat people. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, it changed. It changed. So we started, if I could go back now, here's what I would say. The people I'm looking for, right? Mm-hmm. I'm looking for teachers and coaches. I'm looking for stay-at-home moms. Yeah. I'm looking for um, people with ambition, like they have their own business or they're talking about different things about wanting to be better, right? I'm looking for that person that's in network marketing and they've got a drive, but you just don't see a lot going on, right? I'm not looking for the rock star that's a seven figure earner that's this or that. I don't, I don't, I don't, they're, they're killing it already. Yeah. And I get it in my, I would get it in my mind. Like, man, if I could just bring them into my, my, my team would go nuts. Yeah. No, mm. odds are those people are, are pretty unrecruitable. Maybe not. Yeah. I'm not saying don't recruit them, but the ones that we have had more fun and built bigger things and changed more lives with are the everyday people. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We've been told by multiple people, your pastors, your yep. teachers, your coaches and your stay-at-home moms have the biggest drive to change the financial stability in their homes, right? Because I don't know if you guys know anything about Missouri teachers, but we are, we don't, well, he didn't get paid much Uh, money at all. 2006, my first monthly check was $1,600 a month Yes. for a single income family. Yeah. Like that was it. Yes. And so people who, who are living paycheck to paycheck, those are the people that I identify with. And those are the people that I am so pumped to see, find, you know, the extra leftover at the end of the month, or maybe getting to go on those dream vacations that they never thought possible. Like we were, Right. Um, I had never seen the ocean at 30, 30 years old. Yeah. And I've never flown before. And because of this industry, I got to go to the ocean for the first time and I'm spoiled. <laughs> My first trip to the ocean was Maui. So but that that's what that's what you know was such a big deal to everybody is that we had never done this before right and they were like what are you doing like what is so different nothing to do with who we are or what we were doing or who we were right it wasn't experience it was the inexperience and the authenticity that we brought to the to the arena right? right It was just the the desire to help people and to change people. That bread is a total game changer. (laughs) I I missed it. Um, All right. So listen, so that was one thing I did. The other thing I did is I looked for Facebook groups, not business building or not Mm -hmm. like, I looked for Facebook groups that I had an interest in. Yeah. Right. I can go join all the network marketing groups and all these groups where business owners. That's not my passion. My passion was coaching. My passion is barbecuing. My passion is fishing. Uh, My passion is my family. Different things like that. Right. So I'm I started looking for Facebook groups that had my passion. Kylie's were different. You were joining. So I'm a part of stay at home mom groups, obviously. And we homeschooled for a while. So I'm, I'm still a part of a homeschool community um, because I can still add value to that, that yeah. group. Um, I'm a part of a prayer warriors group. I get to, you know, that's something you guys see on my page is, you know, we, I like to pray for people. That's one of my gifts. And so I'm a part of uh, mom groups. I'm a part of, because of my uh, no thyroid life that I am blessed to live. I'm a part of those groups because those are things that I can add value to, right? I can learn That's from them the key. and I can add value to them. That's right? the key. If you join groups just to join groups and you're not passionate about it, you're just going to watch. You're just going to sit back and watch. But we started joining groups that we could, we wanted to post in. We wanted to make comments in. And what happened is, and I, and it happened with Kylie Moore because Kylie is so transparent. I, you know, I'd make a funny post or, or something that was, you know, barbecue and whatever. But Kylie will be really transparent in some of those groups. And the next thing you know, I'm like, who are you talking to? She's like, oh, it's a friend that someone, uh, this lady that friend requested me out of my mom's group. And we just hit it off. And 
next thing you know, you know, it's, it's growing and it, it's doing things. And so yeah. we start seeing not only are we sending friend requests out, now we're getting friend re requests. Yeah. Um, I don't who's know. That? Okay. Um, so we're getting friend requests from people that we are, are building with. Right. And so that's huge. That, that is, that is ginormous. So I start putting up friend requests. Right. And I, I wish I'd been a little bit more focused on who I was drawn in. Started joining groups. The other thing I started doing now I've got friends, Facebook or not Facebook. Um, happy birthday. Every day, it was an action that I could do. I knew I could do it. I could get in Messenger and wish someone a happy birthday. Now, Facebook now is trying to make it easy on you where you just do a happy birthday inside your notifications. Here's what I would suggest. Instead of just writing happy birthday, and I still do this if I'm trying to get through it too fast, I would actually make a, um, use your Bitmoji or whatever they're called. I don't know what yeah, they're called. Like or come up with a good picture and make a picture. And I stole this from something Anna said, like she said, I made a belated birthday picture and it had a cake. I, I forgot what it was, but she's like, I got more comments from other people going back and saying, Hey, happy birthday, happy belated birthday. So like, I've started doing that. Anna, thank you very much. Right. So I started doing that about, I think that conversation was back before Christmas started doing that, but I try to take majority of my happy birthdays into messenger. OK, and the reason why is when you talk in Messenger, Facebook thinks that you want to see each other's posts. So they start seeing your stuff and you start seeing theirs. And so it's the easiest way for me to be able to get active and go, oh, look, coach so and so just posted that he's grilling today. I can comment on that. I can add value. Right. Or Kylie sees something and, and, and it's supposed to hey, I'm looking for the best math. I see a Becca stuff. Kylie, we did a Becca. And so like. Like I just see her sending stuff all the time, right? Yeah. But it gives you a chance to see their stuff, yeah. right? And so those were some of the things we really started to do on a consistent basis. And then Kylie pushed me to get a little bit more transparent in my post. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I was the guy at first, I've got a business and I posted all over my yes. stuff what? every day, all the time. Please don't do that. Let me take the hit for you for like a month. That's what I did. And no one wanted to follow. I made the mistake, right? Yeah. Um, I just was so excited about my business. I just not only word vomited on everybody I talked to, but I Facebook puked all over you. Like all you saw was our business. No, roll that back. Kylie talked about her Facebook five, but we can't do business all the time. No, no, because people want to connect with the real you, not the business you, not the, not the liquid blessing dealer. Like they want a friend <laughs> that is going to help them. You know, like today, if you have looked at my post, all right, we have two daughters and some days are just, we drive that struggle bus hard all the way to junior high. And it was one of those days. My friends are on there like, girl, the same for us, same for me. Like, and so we connect on that. We, we identify with the daily struggles. And then eventually some of those girls that have commented, guess what? They're going to go on my stories later. And I've already got one that's reached out and said, oh my goodness, like, tell me more about this liquid gold. Tell me more about this. And, you know, like we connected on other things other than our business. And we created that connection and that friendship where we have a trust between each other. Like, we can be besties. We could go and get coffee and not talk about business. We could just talk about marriage and family or, you know, the Lord or whatever it is going on in their life. We could talk about right. anything because we've made connections other than, and then sometimes, you know, those friendships are just friendships and that's great. And then other times those friendships are turned into when I do share about my product or I do share about my business, they're like, oh my goodness, like, that's us. Like groceries are so expensive or gas. Now it's gas money is so expensive. Like $500. Uh, what, how it has been said to us in the past is $500 is the, can be a make or break from that poverty line for a lot of families. Yeah. And that's a big deal. And so if I'm adding value to their life and they can, they know that they can connect with me on a mom level or a wife level or no thyroid or Hashimoto's or whatever, I, if on a weekly basis, I get some, or on a daily basis, I get somebody tagging me in somebody else's post who's been diagnosed with Hashimoto's because I've shared, 
I've shared more than just my business with them. And I get, I mean, I get tagged in people I don't even know. And they're like, hey, can you share? Kylie can help you. Kylie's been through this. Kylie can do this. And it's because I've been my true self on my Facebook page. And I am consistently sharing the good, the bad, the ugly, and the funny, right? Like when you come to my page, you're going to get it all. um, And you're not going to, Right. Unless you see me on a Wednesday or a Friday, or usually when I post about our business or my product or whatever, you know, the other five days, they're going to see, oh, like, okay, she and I could be friends. Like we could totally do life together. Sorry, Maverick is guarding our door over here. <laughs> so, so transparency was huge. Here's another thing you can do. If you are just starting your business or maybe you're relaunching your business, like the post that went nuts for me was... R.I.P. D.P. (laughs) R.I.P. Dr. Pepper. Right. I made that post. And because of so many people that knew me, they were like, that dude drank 100 100 ounces of Dr. Pepper a day, washing uh, down his donuts, three donuts. Yeah. So I drank Dr. Pepper like it was no other. And so once I did that, (laughs) they thought it was a joke. They're like, what are you talking about? But I didn't post, hey, I've got this weight loss or I've got that. I didn't do that. I posted something that related to me that everyone knew about me. And they were like, how are you giving that up? You know, what are you doing? You know? And so we made, we would make posts that would pique interest to get people to ask questions. Yeah. Right. Not make posts to make a statement or to say, I've got something to sell. Yeah. We, we really strive to make posts to get people to come back and ask questions. Now, do I make a post that gets nothing? And I'm like, oh, this is the, this will be a good one. Right. And you put it out there and you're like, oh, well, that didn't work. Here's the other thing that we learned. Don't tie yourself to the outcome of everything. Yeah. Stick to the process. So just, yeah. just, just fall in love with that process. Because if you go and make a post and you're like, this is the one, this is the one we're going to make $10,000 off this post. I'm going to have 15 new brand partners with me. You know, like if you have that and then it gets crickets, I'm telling you, it deflates you so much that you might not post for a week. Yeah. Yeah. You just might be, oh, it just deflates. You can't put expectations on things that are unrealistic. Yeah. I'm going to put ex- expectations on this. I'm going to do my job every day and I'm going to show up every day and I'm going to do what I need to do to move forward. Yeah. That's my expectations. Yeah. It's not on how many people we're going to sign up or, or the amount of money you make or the amount of lives. You, no, that's not even it. I'm going to, my expectation is Ryan shows up every day and gives his very best. Right. And so those were some of the things that we did. Um, and there were other things, you know, you know, that that we would do. Um, oh, stories are new. So we, we try to use stories yes, every day um, that wasn't around when we did. Um, oh, here's another thing I do. Ten people every day to the liquid gold wellness. I'm going to invite ten people every day to liquid gold wellness. And here's my here's my numbers. Five of them are people that not only do they get the invite, but they get a message saying, hey, I just invited you to this group. I love it. Uh, It's given me my strength and my hands back or whatever. Give it just a short snippet of why I love the group, right? Three of them are from a post that we made or something where people have reached out and said, what do you do? Hey, here's our group, da, 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 da. And then two of them are, flyers. Like I'm just throwing a dart out there. I'm going to see if I can get one to stick. Right. There are people that I'm like, eh, if they join, they're already somewhere else, but it, but I know they're looking like I, I I've paid attention long enough, like they're kind of flyers. And what I do is after I invite them, I come back a couple of days later, Hey, did I, sorry. And I, listen, I understand this is not 900, not hundred percent truthful. It's, it's pretty truthful. Um, I'm just not telling them that I was scared to message them, but I'm like, Hey, (laughs) sorry, I forgot to message you. I have this group that I loved. I invited to you a couple of days ago. Did you get a chance to look at it? You know, like I'm just given a chance to reach out. So that's my, my 10 and how I divided up. I got five, no problems. I can, I can do that. I've got three. They've shown interest. So I can go. And then I've got my two, eh, maybe they check it out. Maybe they don't. Yeah. Right. But if you do that over time and let's just say you do, let's just say you do two a day. I'm inviting two people to liquid gold wellness today. Yeah. Two times 30 is what? 60. You've invited 60 people to liquid gold wellness in a month. 60 times 12, 720, right? 
720 over the course of a year that you've invited the liquid gold ones if you just do two a day, All right? Of that 720, I'm going to bet if you have a connection with them, you'll at least hit 10% over the course of the year. Mm -hmm. 72 people to your business, right? I'm honestly going to bet that it's probably a little bit more than that if you yeah. have the connection, um, that you're going to be at least 100 customers in. Yeah. 100 customers in, ordering every month, $2,500 a month, $3,000 a month, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. But it's about going back to being consistent, right? Consistently yeah. doing what you do over time. Yeah. And then the, the thing that, that I, I love about this the most, do you have to be a network marketing guru to do the steps we talked about? Yeah. No. Do you have to have background in this? No. no. Can you invite people to a group? Can you say happy birthday? Can you add people? Now, listen, I'm to the point where I add people and delete people. If I got people that I'm like, I don't even know this person. I've never seen them. Delete them off my Facebook page and I go find someone new, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So we just keep restocking the pond yeah. with new people that might find benefit from what we do. Yeah, and so the thing that changed, you know, the connections, all of those things, but then as far as posting goes, know your people, right? You have friends, you have all of these Facebook friends, figure them out, who are they? Like I said, a lot of them are stay-at-home moms. And a lot of my friends, they're not only stay-at-home moms, but now they're also network marketers. And you want to believe, like, I promise you, you can look through who I comment on, and I'm commenting on my Lime Life people. I'm commenting on my pharmacy people. I'm commenting on other companies. There's not another turmeric company like us. And so I, you know, but I am... I'm supporting them because I know that what they are doing is the same thing I'm doing for the same reasons, right? And so I'm loving on them. I'm hyping them up. And then there are some that, you know, that I have a lot of, some of my biggest hype people are in the same industry. I just got a message from a girl last night and she said, hey, I would love for you to get on this opportunity Zoom with me tonight. She was like, just sit in the background. You don't have to say anything. I would just love for your presence to be there. And I said, so I'm so honored that you would ask me. I am. But because of my position, I can't ever cause anybody to stumble and think that I am not fully focused on this. But she knew that I was one of her hype girls and I could be there to support her and be like, right. yes, girl, go. Um, but as far as posting, <clears throat> you want to do a, a, a RIPDP type of conversation like we see for instance Doug people have known that about his heart issues they've known about his weight issues they've known all of these things or Melissa has struggled with um different symptoms from the vid right like she knows all of like people know right. those closest to you or those maybe you've shared with no and they knew how much he loved his Dr. Pepper so that's all it took was just one small little you know, announcement he was changing something, or maybe it's migraine. It could be like RIP headaches. Yes, like RIP joint that, pain. You you know, and you don't have to use Just, that. Like today is the first day that I have woke up before my alarm feeling fully rested. And that's it. Because if there's anything like me on your timeline or on your Facebook feed, there's a lot of tired mamas or right. there's a lot of tired dads or whatever it is. There's a lot of people that are, you know, in pain, like y'all, I just did my first workout in years without any pain, like whatever it is, whatever the things that you um, are struggling with, that's what you share with, you know, that's what right. you just kind of do that inter speaking post. It doesn't have to be this elaborate post, right? Just something simple, something that piques right. interest well, and draws people in. And here's one thing that we do, and I'm not recommending anyone else do this because <laughs> I don't ever want to recommend someone spend money. But like when we have something that we need, like Kylie's wanting makeup or I'm looking for an electrolyte drink or whatever, I, I honestly, I go to those people first that are in the same industry as me oh, yeah. and they're busting their tail. Yes. And I'm like, hey, I've seen you post this. I am looking for this. Do you offer it? Because I would rather support you than go down to Walmart or yeah. something else. Yeah. And we have built stronger relationships just by people going. And, and I let them know as we talk, because everyone tries to throw the business. I'm not interested in this. I'm just going to be a really good customer for you. Yeah. Like I'll be a customer for yeah. you if this works for me. 
can I do this? And so we've built some great relationships just by supporting somebody because yeah. it was something I needed. I'm not just buying from somebody just to try to draw them in. No, I'm looking for something I need. And yeah. I go, Hey, yeah. Yeah. can I, do you offer this? And other people are like, no, we don't have this, but we have this. No, I'm like, no, that's not what I'm looking for. Yes. Because here's what happens. So, um, I shared in my stories last week of this face cream, like Hashimoto skin and winter do not go great together. So I was extremely dry and she's got me this, like, I don't know. It's like a, I, I don't know. It's a magic serum. Anyway, it just like hydrates my face. So I posted and I said, if you need anything, if you guys want to try this, hit my girl up and I put her name in there and I'll be dang within five minutes in her story. She's one of our customers now. And she was like, y'all, this has been life-changing for me. If you need more of that, I want you to go right. and holler at Kylie. And I got two new customers from that because I'm not threatened by her. I'm not trying to take anything from her. I'm adding value to her business. And then in turn, she's adding value to my business. Well, because and you we're were all smart about that, together. that it wasn't a competing product. Well, and we no, don't have one, right? No, we don't have we a don't competing have one. product. Um, but it, it gave it gave yeah, an opportunity. But it, it wasn't even that I, like, I was completely shocked that she even did that story. I'm, I want her to do good because she's, she's a mom of two little kids and, yep. and, you know, she wants to be a stay-at-home mom, but she can't. So it's just knowing your people. It's right. knowing who you're friends with and that's how you post accordingly. Right. right. And so that's, that's, that's not all the steps. That's not everything we've done. We've done a lot of different things, <laughs> yeah, but, that was a but good it still start. goes back to connection and consistency. Yeah. Uh, I really think Anna, you've been doing this a long time. Dr. Jay's been doing this a long time. You, you guys, consistency, connection, that goes back to all the, all the businesses that have been successful. And I can even go back and look at ones that, that weren't very successful. There was no connection. It was all business. And I wasn't very consistent. I didn't show up. And so people, people aren't attracted to people that just do this. No, 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 that's not attractive to people. I, I struggle with chaos in my life. I don't need more chaos brought in, right? They're looking for consistency. Now they're also looking for authenticity and real and, and hey, today sucks. I, you know, you post something that is just like, people know my health journey. I'm going on a weight loss journey. They know it, but I've posted, I couldn't do it today. I had to have some ice cream, you know, and that relates with a lot of people, but just being consistent, consistently showing up and connecting with people, you're going to do something that's going to lead to you being really happy in a year from now. Yeah. Right. But it still goes back to put PODs, right. Point of decision. You gotta make a decision for yourself, right. You gotta make a decision. Yeah. And, and I believe that so many of you are right now at a fork in the road. You're at your point of decision. What do I want to do? Do I want to go all in or do I just want to dabble? Well, figure out your why. And that will let you tell you what needs to happen. Yeah. But I need you guys to step away from fear because there's so many people that you're like, what if I go all in and it doesn't work? I can't promise you it will. But I can promise you if you don't give it a try, you're always going to go, well, what if? Yeah. What if, and I've coached so many athletes, so many, and I've sat down and I've had a long talk with them. And I'm like, listen, here's what you're setting yourself up for failure. Number one, but you're trying to set yourself up for, okay. So when you're 30, you don't want to go all in now and give it all you have. So at 30, you can tell your buddies and yourself, man, if I had just got after it, I might've been special. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to live in might've been or what could have been. I want to know. I, I want to know Yeah, that wasn't for me. I busted my tail. I gave it my all. I did all I had and I didn't make it work right. Okay. Let's reevaluate. What were you doing? That, Cause we could do that, but I do not want to be the guy that says, yeah, you know, if I had done this, you know, if I had, if I'd really got after it, I could have been special. I could have, yeah. no, no, that that's a game that the enemy just sells you all the time. Yeah. Don't, don't buy into that. You want to know, you want to know, I, I can't live with what ifs. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of, you have anything else you want to add? No, I think that each one of you have so many amazing things inside of you. You have so much to offer this world, not just what, you know, with this, this amazing bottle, this, what, you know, you guys hear me call it my liquid blessing. I can bless a lot, a lot of, a lot of lives. It is blessing a lot of lives, but what you have in here and what you do on a daily basis, 
can change can change the world and so you have to faith and fear cannot coexist right so you've got to step out in faith let the fear shove that down shove that back if you feel like you were supposed to do something or reach out to somebody or or share something that's what you're supposed to do okay don't let fear of what if well what if it fails well what if it doesn't fail right like our our kids play softball and they play basketball and you miss 100 percent of the shots that you never take you miss a hundred percent of the swings that you never take, right? Like yeah. we had one that would strike out looking all the time. And I'm a, like, if you- I was afraid to swing and miss. You're still striking out, you're huh? Still, you're still, yeah. You, you never give yourself a chance to hit it. Like yeah. you can't hit the ball unless you swing. Yeah. Right? You can watch a lot of good pitches go by and you're still out. You're still sitting on this freaking bench going, well, I'm not, you're not helping the team. You're not helping yourself. Swing the bat. Hit the ball. Yes. So do the things. Yes. Do the things that get you to where you want to go. Stop. I was, like I said the other day, I was reading a a story about being a sideliner, sitting on the sidelines and watching all the people do the the things that you, you want to do, that you know you can do, the things that you're good at, but you're too afraid. So stop being a sideliner. Get into the game. Put yourself into it. Right. And stop looking at failure as losing failure is just the step in success quitting and not doing anything that that's that's losing right yes. failure is not it is failure is such a silly word that people have made so no failure is one step closer to figuring out how to do it the right way well the, right one you're said trying it, one said it best because he was like he asked us well what's the opposite of success and i was like well obviously failure and he was like uh-uh the opposite of success is quitting Right. And I'm not a quitter. We don't, we're not quitters in our house. And so right. I'm going to do the things, even if I fall flat on my face and look like a fool, which I do a lot of times, I'm going to get back right. up because my why is worth it. Right. Right. So, all right. We love you guys. I yes. hope this helped. I hope this gave you some action steps or at least just a little bit of belief in what you can do. You need to believe in yourself. I can't do that for you. Kylie can't do that. Um, but we are here to support you. But I do believe in you. Yeah, we believe in you, but you got to believe in yourself before yeah. we do something yeah. special. And, and the greatest thing about this is, is you have the information to believe in the product. We have the history and we have the information to believe in the business. Yeah. Because it's a good system. We've been in multiple ones. This is good, right? Mm-hmm. Now you just got to believe in you because the other two things are taken care of. Yeah. And we're going to do something special, right? So... Mm-hmm. Love you guys. I hope Love this helped. You. Yes. I'll talk to you later. See you guys.